وقيل للذين اتقوا ماذا أنزل ربكم and it said to the people of God consciousness what has your Lord revealed so just as those who lack any consciousness of Allah Ta'ala just as those who reject belief in Allah Ta'ala Almighty God just as those who find that the life of this world is nothing more than one of the philosophers worded it uh, brutish short or however he put it miserable, miserable the exact words escape me right now when they're asked what is your Lord revealed if they can even acknowledge belief in any higher reality they'll say nothing of any good bitterness hardship difficulty but the people who know Allah and the people who live their lives based on the revelation of Allah and the people who try to walk in the footsteps of the prophets السلام, and for Muslims specifically our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when they're asked so the people of taqwa who are those people we'll go to the answers since we set it up like that they say my Lord has revealed good وَقِيلَ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ مَاذَا أَنزَلَ رَبُّكُمْ قَالُوا خَيْرًا They say, our Lord has revealed good. The guidance He gives us is good. It contains goodness. It contains direction. It contains meaning. It gives us perfect, a purpose rather, in terms of how we live our life in this world. It gives us solutions to our problem. Not panaceas, not band-aids, but real solutions. And they understand for those solutions to be meaningful, we have to work. We have to work. But they accept that. They accept everything that their Lord has revealed. And those are the people that vi uh, briefly reiterate because we spent an entire khutbah previously discussing this verse. But Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ So we say this in way of defining لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ Those people of taqwa, this verse tells who they are. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ It's now righteousness to turn your faces in the direction of the east or the west in prayer it's more than that rather righteousness that you sincerely believe in Allah so righteousness is faith in God and in the last day that this world is not the end of everything if we believe this world was the end of everything, we'd be in trouble. Because the door would be open for us to entertain bad thoughts about our Lord. A believer would, uh, a person who knew Allah would not entertain such thoughts, but an ordinary person. But when anyone understands that this world is only a preparatory stage for what comes after. That this world is the introduction, the book comes after. Literally, those who are given their books. Those who are given their books, when do we get the book? After the introduction. This is the introduction, the book will come later. 
So it's a metaphor in a sense, but in a sense it's not a metaphor. This is a preparatory stage for what comes later. So we believe in the last day, that this world will have an end, just as our life in this world will have an end. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَائِكَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنُ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ وَمَنْ حَيَاتُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاوْ الْقُرُورِ Every soul will taste of death. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَائِكَةُ الْمَوْتِ And you'll be given your recompense in full on the day of resurrection. Everything we do in this world, we will be recompensed. In khairah, for khair. If it's good, then we'll get good. Wa in sharran, for sharran. And if it's other than that, then we'll be recompensed with other than that. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازْ Whoever's pulled back from hell and entered into paradise, that is the victorious one. وَمَا الْحَيَةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاوْ الْقُرُورِ and what is the life of this world except a deceptive enjoyment? We enjoy it, but it deceives us. It deceives some people into thinking this is the end. It deceives some people into thinking it will last forever. It deceives some people into thinking we don't have, we're not going to be accountable for everything we do here. It's deceptive. It deceives some people into believing that its sweetness leads to sweetness. So some people find sweetness in things that are haram to eat. But that sweetness is temporary. It doesn't lead to sweetness. It leads to bitterness. Some people find sweetness in drinking things they shouldn't drink. That sweetness isn't sweetness at the end of the day, it leads to bitterness. So we believe in the last day. And then we move on to another stage in our life. Just as when we were in the, in our, the wombs of our parents, that was a stage of our existence. We were alive in the womb, but we didn't perceive it. Then we come into this world, that's a stage. Then we leave this world and we rest in the grave. That's the stage. Then we're resurrected from the grave. That's the stage. And then we move on to heaven. Or Yav Allah. We seek refuge with Allah. Some people move on to hell. That's a terminal stage. Khalidin Afiha. They dwell therein forever. Eventually. Some people in hell will, become, will come out. And then they will dwell forever in paradise. But no one would gamble with going to hell if they knew the reality of the situation. The angels, the scriptures, so faith is a part of taqwa. Those are the people of faith. They have faith. And they spend their money in spite of their love for it. And some we could even say in spite of their need for it. وَيُكْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا They gave preference to others and the needs of others even though they themselves were in dire straits. For who? وَآتَ الْمَالِ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ ذَوِ الْقُرْبَىٰ The relative. وَالْيَتَامَ The orphan. وَالْمَسَاكِينَ The poor people. وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ The travelers and wayfarers. وَالسَّائِلِينَ those who are forced by circumstance to ask and for the liberation of slaves. That is taqwa. As we will explain or mention at the end. And they establish regular prayer. And they pay the alms that are due from them. That is a part of taqwa. 
And they're faithful in their covenants when they convene them. If they give their word, they're faithful in keeping their word. That's an aspect of taqwa. And they're patient in the face of hunger, in the face of calamities, in the face of tribulations. And when they're tested with warfare, they don't exceed the bound. They don't kill innocent people who are combatants. They don't wreak ha havoc on public space. They don't engage in kidnapping and murdering innocent people. And they're patient and steadfast when they're tested with war. And then Allah Ta'ala says, These are the people of truth. These are the people of taqwa. So those are the people Allah Ta'ala is talking about when he says, And it said to the people of taqwa, ماذا أنزل ربكم? What is your Lord revealed? قالوا خيرا. He's revealed good. The believer finds good in everything Allah Ta'ala gives them. In everything Allah Ta'ala reveals in His scripture. They find good. Even if there's hardship, they find good. Because they understand if the scripture brings hardship, the scripture also tells us وَإِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى Hardship brings ease. Hardship brings ease. Struggle builds character. If we want to be people of character, then we have to be people of struggle. We mentioned last week, or a couple weeks ago, I believe, maybe somewhere else, will reiterate, the Qur'an is constantly pushing us and urging us to struggle. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِ Struggle in the way of Allah, as should rightfully be the case. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنْهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Those who struggle, for our sake we guide them in our paths. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِ You mentioned that. Struggle in the way of Allah. When Allah talks about the transaction, that will save you from a painful punishment. What is the investment we have to make? Make tu'minuna billahi wa rasuli wa tujahiduna fi sabili la bi amwalikum wa anfusikum. Thalikum khayru lakum in kuntum ta'alamun. That you believe sincerely in Allah and His Messenger and you str struggle in the way of Allah with your wealth and your lives, that is best for you if you but knew. Man, Allah. When Allah Ta'ala talks about the people who were placed if the current crop does not do the job. Ya ayyuhalladheena adanu, O you believers, may yartadda minkum an deeni. Whoever of you turns back on his faith, from serving the faith, ay an nusrati dinihi, fasawfa yati Allahu bi qawmin yuhibbum yuhibbuna. Allah Taala will bring another people whom He will love, and they will love Him. What are their other characteristics? The first characteristic, they will love Allah. Yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbuna. He will love them, and they will love Him. Al dillatin al mu'minin. They'll be gentle to the believers. So these are the people Allah brings to replace those who aren't doing the job. They're gentle to the believers. They're not a source of tribulation to the believers. They're not a source of burden and hardship and trauma to the believers. And so what is an important implication of this? Brothers and sisters, this is telling us is your husband a believer, sister? Then you have to be gentle to him. You can't raise your voice, scream, and torment the brother because he's a believer. And the likewise for the brothers. Allah is telling us, your wife is a believer? Why are you yelling at her? Why are you raising your hand? 
Why are you threatening to kick her out to the street? Because she burned your dinner. So you're threatening her in, in totally un-Islamic ways of a burnt piece of a burnt biscuit. They're gentle with the believer. And those people who arrogantly defy the faith, those people who arrogantly try to undermine and destroy the faith, they're firm in their faith. And then what does Allah say? They will struggle in the way of Allah. So Allah is telling us, Allah Ta'ala is telling us, struggle, 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 struggle. And we could go on and on. We could just do the khutbah on this thing. But this is a tension. We've gone off on it. But Allah says, these are the people of Taqwa. And those people, everything is good. And we mentioned, even if it involves hardship, even if it involves struggle, the believer sees it as good. The people of taqwa see it as good. And then Allah Ta'ala says, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً Those who do good in this world will have good in this world. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً Those who do good in this world, they'll have good. As we said, even if that good involves hardship, the believer will find good in it. The believer will see good in it. The believer will experience good in it. Because that is the state of the people of taqwa. Those who do good in their worship of Allah and they do good to the servants of Allah. Those are the people of goodness. They're good in their worship. What does that mean? That means they savor the worship of Allah. They don't dread Ramadan coming. Oh, it's Ramadan. Oh, oh I can't eat for a month. It's Ramadan. I'm going to have cramps. There's oh, it's Ramadan. Allahu Akbar. Allah's given me an opportunity to draw close to Him. Allah Ta'ala has given me an opportunity to wipe out all of my sins. They love fasting. They love praying. They love spending in the way of Allah. You mentioned the, the verse, وَآتَ الْمَالْ عَلَى حُبِّهِ One meaning of that is they spend their wealth out of love for spending. عَلَى حُبِّهِ يعني وَآتَ الْمَالْ عَلَى حُبِّهِ عَلَى حُبِّ الْإِنْفَاقِ They love to spend. They love to pray. They love to fast. They love to serve. They love to give. And because they love to serve and they love to worship Allah and they love to pray, they love to fast, they love the Qur'an. The only thing that pulls them from the Qur'an is some worldly obligation. If not, they can read 24 hours. This is the word of my beloved. This is the communique from my beloved. Oh boy, subhanAllah. Hey, you gotta go to work. Oh, stop for life. Mr. Bartra. Quran's getting so good. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسِنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا Those who do good in this world, they have good. They do good in their worship and they do good to the servants. They go together. They go together. The Prophet ﷺ, Allah Ta'ala in the Quran reminds us of this and this is one example. In the early revelation, Allah Ta'ala was cultivating in the believers a healthy sense of social consciousness. We mentioned the, the verse we just mentioned, وَآتَ al-mad. All of the spending that was mentioned was in the social realm. That will kurba, the relatives, that's in the social realm. وَالْيَتَامَ, the orphans, that's in the social realm. وَالْمَسَاكِينَ, the poor people, that's in the social realm. Etc. 
But from the earliest days of the revelation, Allah Ta'ala was cultivating in the believers a sense of social consciousness. The earliest revelation, Allah Ta'ala, He mentions the discussion between the people of heaven and the people of hell. And the people of heaven, they say to the people of hell, مَاذَا سَلَقَكُمْ fi saqar? What led you to hell? Qalu, the people of hell, they say, Qalu, لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ We were not amongst those who prayed. And then what do they say after that? وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ And nor were we amongst those who fed the poor people. So, right from the beginning, the worship of Allah, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ Those who do good in the worship of Allah, وَأَحْسَنُوا إِلَىٰ عِبَادِ اللَّهِ And they do good to the servants of Allah. From the beginning of the revelation, this, this thing is reinforced in the consciousness of the believer. We didn't pray, ibadah. And we didn't for the, feed the poor people, service to the servants of Allah. Those who do those two things, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا They will have good. They'll have good. And good doesn't mean being rich. Good means being satisfied with what you're blessed with. If you are, you're wealthy. This we've been in, inundated with the myth of prosperity. That if you rape the world of all its resources and you, you divvy up all those resources, then people will have happiness. There's, that's not the key to happiness. Happiness lies in contentment with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you. If you have contentment, you have happiness. And you have wealth. Al-ghina fil qana'ah. Contentment, wealth rather, is in contentment. As we know, when people have all the wealth, the things a wealthy person has and they need more. They're not wealthy, they're poor. Because poor, poverty means to need more, to be in need. And wealthy means to lack needs. Allah is al ghani He doesn't need anything. وَنَحْنُ <laughs> فُقَرَاء We're impoverished, we're impoverished to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we're not impoverished to the need for a 5,000 square foot house. We can sleep in a tent in the park. In reality, we go to the park, pitch a tent, and live in it. We don't need the house, it's nice. Don't sell your house and buy a bunch of tents. <laughs> but we don't need the house. We don't need the car. If we live in the city, we can ride the bus. It may take longer to get places. Depending on the time of day, it might take less time. But we can walk. We can ride the bus. We can take the bark. And if we need a car, we don't need a Lexus. We don't need a Jaguar. We don't need a Mercedes Benz. We could ride a, a Tesla. It does the same thing. It gets us from there to there. We don't need. Those are wants that have been made into needs. We don't need this or that brand. We become so foolish that we'll, we'll pay more money for the same thing because it has a different name. Some of you are old enough to remember the, the Ford Pinto and the Mercury Bobcat. It was the same car. But some people would buy a Bobcat because they felt wild. No, Bobcat. Over a Pinto. Some people would buy a Toyota Matrix as opposed to a Plymouth Vibe because the Matrix has a Japanese name, Toyota. It's the same car made in the same place. It used to be made in Fremont. It's the same car with a different label. But some people will buy this because the name is different. And so what's not even a, a, a want 
but is only an illusion, has been translated or transferred into a need. And the earth gets destroyed in the process. The only thing we need in this world is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's our most fundamental and essential need. So Allah said, Ayyuhan nas, antum fuqara'u, wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hameed. O oh, humanity, you are in need of Allah. And Allah is free of all need, worthy of all praise. So, if, And if a person has that, a person has good. But Allah gives us more. He gives us comfort. He gives us ease. He gives us provisions. And a person of faith, a person of taqwa will receive that. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا and the hereafter, the abode of the hereafter is better. No matter what we get in this world of good, the hereafter will be better. There's no basis for comparison. No matter what good we receive in this world, the hereafter will be better. And if we're challenged with things that we see in this world as hardship and burden, misery, weighty matters, the hereafter will definitely be better. As we mentioned earlier, we shouldn't see this world, we can't see this world as the end of our affair. Why are we, why are we different from everything in this physical world that we know? We don't see monkeys gathering for chuppah, they say we descended from the apes. And they should have jumma. There are... <laughs> You don't see the monkeys gathering and then one monkey gets up on a tree stump and starts yelling at the other monkeys. They don't do that. You don't see monkeys building altars. They don't do that. You don't see monkeys putting a man on the moon or a satellite in orbit. Some people think the man on the moon was staged. But they will acknowledge their satellites circling the earth. Monkeys don't do that. Monkeys don't build cell phones. Monkeys don't build cameras that you can go outside if you have the right camera and push a few buttons and send the whole message halfway around the world in a few seconds. Monkeys don't do that. Human beings do that. Human beings do that. The unique properties that human beings have point to a unique destiny for the human being. It points to a unique purpose for the human being. It points to a purpose, to a meaning that transcends this physical world because the human being has a spiritual nature that yearns for the divine. And when he or she cannot find that, they'll try to substitute that yearning with other things. It's not eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die and that's the end of it is eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you will die, so you better start preparing for your death today. Die before your death. Die to this world. Die to the illusions. Die to the false needs. Die to anything that turns you away from your Creator. Die to anything that turns you away and fogs up your purpose for being here. Die to anything that serves as a poor, inadequate substitute for your need to worship your Lord. And die to any illusion that anything in this world can even compare to the joys of the hereafter. Or anything in this world can compare to the torment or the punishment of the hereafter. It's said that the fire of hell is 70 times hotter than any fire that can be generated in this world. Atomic heat, whatever. Fire, the hell fire is 70 times hotter than that. And some say 70 is just a metaphor for infinitely hotter than that. The hereafter is better. And what an excellent abode for the people of Taqwa, who we described earlier. There's a fitting abode. 
Because taqwa, the things we mentioned, maintaining your faith, working to extend charity to others, even when you might be tested yourself with poverty and need, <coughs> establishing regular prayer, paying the alms due in one's wealth, fulfilling one's oaths and covenants and obligations, being steadfast and patient in the face of disease or hunger or when tested with warfare, all of that requires a tremendous effort. <coughs> Look at the people making no effort. They wake up in the morning, drag into work. They don't worry about, oh, it's getting summer now. They don't worry about getting up 4.30 in the morning to pray Fajr. They get up at 8 o'clock, jump into their clothes, run to work, punch in at night. They don't worry about getting up 4.30 in the morning for Fajr. They don't worry about not eating in these long summer days coming up now that Ramadan's moving into the summer. They don't worry about making sure that when they go shopping, there's nothing derived from pork in this product. If so, put it back and pass on it. And finding no substitute, so they just won't eat any of that until they can find something that's halal. They don't worry about that. There's no effort involved. And the effort is fulfilling, as we said, but they don't even have to make that effort or choose not to make that effort. They get up, they go shopping, they eat, grab anything. What's on sale today? Oh, that one's on sale, just grab it. They don't read the label. They're not concerned about the things that a believer and a person of taqwa concerns himself or herself with. They just get up and they do whatever they want to do, however they want. And that's the end of it. They don't worry about if they have some passion in them. And they meet someone who offers them an opportunity to express their passion. They just go off. The people talk about, well, you know, I'm not ready to get married right now, so, you know, check me out in a year. That takes work, it takes effort, it takes sacrifice. So if people who struggle in this world thus, people who sacrifice in this world thus, people who buy go and pass up this, that, or the other, or the other in this world in that way, shouldn't they have the most excellent home in the hereafter? Allah Ta'ala says, What an excellent abode for the hereafter. For the, for the people of taqwa. That's the abode of the hereafter. May Allah Ta'ala make us amongst them. Allah, may Allah Ta'ala make us amongst them. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to adopt their traits and their characteristics. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala strengthen our faith. May Allah Ta'ala deepen our faith. May Allah Ta'ala elevate our taqwa. May Allah Ta'ala make us uh, from, from those who I have taqwa in the haram and the halal, make us of the people who have taqwa in the makhroom and in the mustahab. May Allah Ta'ala make us have the people of taqwa who even in some things that are mubah or permissible, we avoid fearing that overindulging in them might lead us to that which is makhroom or that which is haram. May Allah elevate us, may Allah purify us, may Allah beautify us with the light of faith. May Allah Ta'ala fill our hearts with the light of faith and bless it to shine through our entire being. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala bless us with what He's promised us. And if He's promised us, it's on us, whatever He's promised us of good in this world and the next, it's up to us because Allah never breaks His promise. Are we willing to fulfill the conditions that He's placed upon us? That's the only question. Because in Allah la yukhlifu al-mi'ad, Allah Taala never breaks His promise. Aqulu qawli hada, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum li
يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses all of those Muslims struggling in places like Syria or Palestine or Afghanistan. Every day, Afghanistan, may Allah have mercy on the people there. Generations of war. Some people there, they're, they're adults, have only their entire life known war. And now every day there's a new atrocity. It doesn't mean that we learn of. Every day atrocities are being committed. Every day there's a new atrocity. Every day there's a new revelation of the depth of the depravity of our American army. And, and we can equally mention the depth of the depravity of some Muslims. But this is our country here. And it's a shame that the, the lust for blood and war profiteering has created a situation where the very soul of this country is in jeopardy. When you, when you build, pursue lies on wars on lies, when you indiscriminately kill innocent people, when you go into countries and tear apart the social fabric, the social fabric of Iraq has been torn apart. The social fabric of Afghanistan has been torn, torn apart. A good, beautiful people. Read some of the travel logs of those people who went to Afghanistan in the 60s and the early and mid 70s. The simplicity of the people, the honesty of the people, the truthfulness of the people. And now everyone's corrupt from high to low. Everyone is obsessed with how to get money by any means necessary. People who are neighbors and living in peace and harmony at odds with each other, torn apart. The ethnic groups that were peacefully coexisting now organized around bloodthirsty militias. Because we've torn apart the social fabric of that country for nothing but money, war profiteering. Every job in the military that was formerly done by soldiers who are paid a dollar or two dollars an hour are done by private contractors who are paid a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars a year. The cooks. I was in the military. We had KP. Some of you know what that is. You had kitchen patrol. You had to go in there and peel the potatoes. Not some contractor who's making a hundred thousand dollars. We had guard duty. They didn't have black water or Z Corporation, or these pride dying corps providing the guards and the security. The soldiers were the guards. You had the, the, the military police, and they were making a dollar an hour like everybody else. And not to even endorse their presence in any foreign land, but to emphasize the point, it's all contracts and profiteering, no big contracts, that result in countries being torn apart. You cannot do that. Now you want to expand because the people making the drones is one of the biggest growth industry in the country, the Predator drones and the Hellfire rockets. We want to expand the program into Yemen and wreak havoc on those people and expand it into Somalia and then expand it here there, even domestically. Now police departments getting permission to use drones to spy on their own people domestically to patrol the border. This is insanity. And when this insanity that destroys the social fabrics of people, that robs any meaning for the dignity that privacy provides to people, and when that's instituted into the very fabric of a country, that country is going to rot from the inside. It's going to rot from the inside. And that's what's happening. And the Muslim has to stand up no, no. and say, we are not going to participate in that. And we're going to build our fear on truth, on justice, on righteousness, on respect for innocent life, 
on the respect for the difference of culture, for the respect of the resources that people have. They should be used to enrich their lives and not to feed our excess and feed our addiction and feed our overconsumption. This is what the Muslim has to say, brothers and sisters. This is what our religion is calling us to. And that's good to the servants. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا الَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي عِبَادِتِ اللَّهِ وَإِلَى عِبَادِ اللَّهِ Those who do good in the worship of Allah and they do good to the servants of Allah. May Allah bless us to be those people. Allah maghfir al-Muslimin wal-Muslimat wal-Mu'minin wal-Mu'minat al-Ahyai minhum wal-Amwat Rabbana la tuzid kulubana ba'di if hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahman kanta al-Wahab Rabbana afrid alayna al-Sabra wa thakbil aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-Qawm al-Kathirin Rabbana afrid alayna al-Sabra wa thakbil aqdamana wa tawathana muslimin wa afu anna wa ufir lana wa arhamna anta مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الحم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وكفر الرجال ونعوذ بك من الفقر إلا إليك ومن الخوف إلا منك ومن ال... ومن ال... ونعوذ بك من 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 الهم والحزن من العجز والكسل من الجبن والبخل اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تعل به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ إمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين وعفو عنا وعفو لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين حكم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر